Hello, my name is Kathleen Crabtree and I play viola with the Allen Philharmonic. Today I'm going to talk to you about our tone and what we do with our bow arm. So we want to think of our tone in three different ways. We call it the tone triangle. So one point is weight, another point is speed, and the last point is contact point. So together they make a tone triangle. And those are your three variables that you can play around with all the time for different sounds on your instrument. So if I have a really heavy weighted sound on the C string, that produces a big sound. If I vary my weight to be much less, so very light, it's quieter. So I can also um, vary my speed. So this is a really fast bow. Now slow bow. So you can go from fast to slow, slow to fast. And then the last variation is contact point. So I can place it just over the fingerboard, which is a different sound than right over the F holes, which is a different sound than right next to my bridge. All different sounds. We also want to think about how our hair, the hair of our instrument, the hair of our bow, excuse me, connects to the string. So if you put your bow on the string and kind of let your hand roll over as it usually kind of wants to do, I'm not gonna get all the hairs of the bow connecting with the string. So that's gonna change the way it sounds. It sounds much different and thinner than if I roll back my hand and all the hairs of my bow are connected with this string. Let me show you that again. So I'm rolled over. I roll back so that I'm fully in contact with the string. And it's a much richer, fuller sound. So that's called flat hair, like that. We also want to have a straight bow. So we start here at the frog, and I want my bow to be parallel with the bridge. So not angled this way or that way. And as I draw out, it stays fairly parallel to the bridge. show you that on the D string. And that gives us a really consistent sound and doesn't sound like this. That's exaggerated, but still, I sometimes see students do that like that. That doesn't even look right. So we want to bow out. And have a straight bow. And you can look at this in your mirror at home. Or when you're in class, be sure that your bow is just parallel to the bridge. And so to practice this, we do something called silent rainbows, where we place the bow on the string and just rock back and forth, keeping our bow straight. And that takes us to the next point, which is our elbow. Our elbow sometimes, we, we don't always think about our elbow being part of 
each stroke. But if I'm on the C string, my elbow should be fairly high. G string, little lower. D string, lower still. A string, lowest. Not all the way next to my body though. A little bit of space. So silent rainbows here. The elbow moves up and down to accommodate the different string heights. And that just helps your arm um, have a more natural uh, weight to it. You're not working against yourself. This is what we call the chicken wing, like this. <laughs> this looks wrong and it sounds weird. So I elevate my elbow, get a nice big tone. So the elbow brings, brings the arm out. One thing we want to talk about is the relationship of the frog to the tip. The tip is much lighter than the frog. We never want to be afraid of the frog. Sometimes um, young string students are afraid of bowing all the way towards the frog. It's a little heavier, so then we get stuck at the tip. And we don't sound as powerful as we could. So we want to practice all the way from the frog to the tip. Facile, easily movable bow arm will help with your big viola sound. And we want to think of the muscles in our back, big muscles, like imagine the wings of a bird opening up. And we use those muscles to get a big viola tone. So it's as if I'm opening up my wings. <laughs> Nice big tone, starting from the frog. Whereas if I used smaller muscles here in my hand, I don't get that power. So we want to think of our big muscles, just like a cellist would, to draw that bow across like that. 